and we're starting with England and their defeat, oh dear, to Brazil. Are England as good as most people think we are? Now chipped over the top, an opportunity now for Brazil to get in, finishes, he's got side, and Pickford can't make the save, 1-0 Brazil. I was thinking that, you know, we've had more than our share of the game. Brazil, they have won by a golden hill. It's England's first home defeat since 2020. It's time. Is it coming home? Is it 03717 You can dial in now and have your say. In fact, if you dial in now, you might even get on now or on the other side of the break. But we'd love to hear from you. 03717 Virgin, let's go to the top of the pile. All right? Mm. Uh, England, what did you make of it? Before the game, we were all pretty confident, even even before we found out that Brazil were going to be pretty weakened, which they mm. were. Uh, what did you make of the game? Not great. I mean, Brazil, I mean, that could have been four in a row because they were going into that game with no form whatsoever, losing their three before that. Um... Also, not an iconic Brazilian team, you'd say. And that's no disrespect. They've got some unbelievable players, by the yeah. way. But they're not Brazil of old. Why you... are they, sorry, why are they not in the yellow? Do you know what? Me and my dad had this conversation. That annoyed me. Where's their, their yellow? I mean, if you've got Brazil covered at Wembley... Get the yellow one. Get the yellow kit out. I, I, thought, I, I guess thought it's a thing. deal with whoever makes their kit Nike. Yeah. Maybe, but people want to see the yellow. Of course they do. Well, I just thought it was... Um... Maybe of a mixed, mixed bag, you'd have to say. I mean, a couple of performances where... I got exactly what I expected. I thought Drew Benlin was good, tried to make things happen. Yeah. Um, I mean, Maguire at centre half, I think there's a problem there. I think Chilwell at left back didn't do himself any justice. Um, and also, as well, another thing that annoys me about, so I read the reports. After I watched it, I always have to go through the papers, have a look, see what people give scores and stuff. Yeah. And one, someone gave Ollie Watkins a four. Okay, fair enough. But it said, missed an absolute sitter. Well, he didn't miss a sitter. He went to finish it. The defender got a toe to it. He did which get a touch. Took it, which took it up, he did and that's why it went over the bar. So I thought, well, that's a bit harsh. But if you hadn't watched the game and you read that, yeah, you're going ah. Which a lot of people do that. Exactly, and that, and that annoys me. That yeah. Because or they'll see it on on social media and click, and they go bump. Exactly, you'll see that quite clearly. He didn't just blast it over. The no. defender got a good touch in it, but we we were weakened, right? We had no Kane, we had no Saka, we mm-hmm. had no Shaw. I, I would imagine that. We were a midfielder short. Conor Gallagher played that role, but I, I would imagine he's not starting. So mm. we were effectively a midfielder short. So, you know, we had, what, five first teamers mm. out. So we can't read too much into they it. They had players we? out, though. They did have players I mean, out. they had one of the biggest out of Neymar. He yeah. wasn't there. Do you know what I mean? Richardson, no. he, he weren't there. But it's, it's one of them where you look at it and you go, it, it doesn't do you any good to to put in that level of performance because we're going into a major tournament. You want confidence going into the squad. And all of a sudden now, if anything, we're asking more questions. Well, hold on. If so and so happens, because we've got a glimpse. If Kane wasn't there, yeah. Watkins plays down the middle. And another thing I think why he might have struggled a bit is that England are used to Harry Kane, who comes off the front, plays with his back to goal. Watkins is a runner, he runs in behind. Yeah. He can to- play totally with his back different. to goal. Totally different. Yeah. Not used to playing with Hel- Helps the build up play. Exactly. And then the wingers can get in behind. And you've, so got, on. you've got Foden, who's absolutely outstanding for Man City, doesn't play the same for England. For whatever reason, his level of performance is never the same for England as it is for Manchester City. Mm. Now, is that the manager? Is it the coach? Who knows? But. I definitely thought I expected more from England because that's a showpiece game. Though. Yeah, I did. I did get the feeling the players were literally picked by the manager, and then he went, "Go on, off you go," and that was it. Mm. I didn't think there any direction. No, the, I, I I thought there were some bright moments. I thought Gordon played well. Yeah, I thought agreed. Bowen played well. But you mentioned Maguire. Ollie Watkins probably didn't have his best game. I we were talking about this in the meeting. We all sort of think that. They should have flipped and Tony would have been better against Brazil and maybe Oli Watkins against yeah. Belgium tomorrow. Live on TalkSport. Um, I thought uh, it's nice to see Manu come on. He was only on for, what, 15 minutes? Mm. But it's good. You know, he didn't he didn't do anything wrong. He was obviously told to keep it simple. Do you know what? It's one of those now. You, you're looking at um, this England squad and there are still some phenomenal players in there. You can't get away from that fact. But you are starting to wonder now, is our squad as strong as we all think it is? Because we all... Listen, we, everyone, we spoke about it last week about English arrogance. Yeah. Going into every major tournament, we always go, we're going to win this one. We've got the best team, we've got the best squad. You start looking at one or two injuries and you see what the backups did. You start going, hmm, are we really as good as yeah. we, 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 we were meant to be? And he, ooh, even at centre half, we all talk about Maguire and, and Gareth loves him. I genuinely believe that's a, a, a position. And left back, that left hand side, he has to look at because Maguire, for me, looked a bit shaky. I agree. Rafinha could have scored when he passed it back to him. Ben Chilwell going forward. Defensively, he was okay, but going forward wasn't great. No. If you've got no Luke Shaw and Maguire's in that type of form, you start going, Ooh. What, what do you do, centre half? Because that I would imagine that's that's why Gareth favours putting two holders in front of that defence because he doesn't trust start, the defense. It's starting to make a lot of sense now. Yeah. But then 
We shouldn't have to do that, right? No. We should be good enough. Well, Who do you play alongside Stones? That's the problem. You put Walker there and then play a, another right back. G Gomez maybe. I thought Conza did well when he came on, but again, these are untested. Dunk. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't think he had his best game, but Branthwaite's too too early for that. I mean, what you want in an ideal world is Branthwaite to start against Belgium and be absolutely unbelievable. But I can't see Gareth changing his starting eleven Mate, on the back of If he plays well against friend. Belgium, then you and does well, you go. Do you know what? Throw him in, man. Where would this team finish in the Premier League? Depends who's in charge. Gareth. Sixth, seventh. Okay. Pep. Pep. They win it, probably. You think so? Yeah. Okay. Are you worried about what you've seen or not? I wouldn't say I'm worried, but I, I definitely would have... I was more comfortable before the game. And then seeing the outcome and how we played, yeah. I was a bit more like, ooh, okay. Okay. Maybe. You want you want to win your last two games going into a major competition, right? Or not? Does it make any difference? Well, it, it depends. I mean, playing against a level of opposition like that, you, it gives you massive confidence going and beating Brazil, beating Belgium. You go, here we go. Yeah. But if you go into the major tournament losing to them two... You go, mm. and, Eng and England's group's not easy, by the way. No. Slovenia, Denmark, and there's one more who I can't remember. Look at, look at Joe, look. Slovenia, Denmark, who's the other one? We've got, um, look at, look. You do this a lot, Benny. You put everyone, I mean, either sorry. say it, even know it, or don't yeah, sorry, know it. That, it's, it's a tough group. Yeah. Let's get to a break quick. No, no, no. <laughs> we can't do that. Joe's looking, it's looking now. Slovenia, Denmark, Denmark. Said, and, and the Serbia. Oh. Serbia. Well done. Serbia. Yeah. Boom, Next time you go to say that, maybe have all yeah, yeah. three of them. In so your that, head. you think about that group, you go, Ooh, not easy. Don't say that. Speak to Neil, QPR fan. Hello, Neil. Hello. How are you doing? All right. I'm great. How are you today? Yeah, good, good. Just finished work, so all good in the hood. What do you do for a living, Neil? I'm a builder. What do you build? Oh, you name it, I'll build it. Generally, I knock things down at the moment. Oh. <laughs> What's the weirdest thing you've been asked to build, Neil? Oh, dear me, I don't know. Probably a, a pool room somewhere. Oh, right, okay. A pool as in as in the swimming pool. Oh, right, okay. Why is that, that, why is that weird? Yeah, why is that weird? Yeah, I've no idea why it's weird, but you ask for the weirdest thing, and, I'm, you know, mostly it's just buildings, oh, extensions, okay. Okay. conservatories. What, so, what would you like to say <laughs> in the footballing world, Neil? Uh, well, there's a couple of things, really, one of which you're not really talking about, and I think you should, one of which is Gareth Southgate. Tactically inept. You've got to look at the the one the biggest situation that we remember, everyone remembers, Chiellini fouling Saka. What did he do with it? What do you he mean? Did what, did he... what did he do with it? What did Chiellini do? He pulled Saka back, mm. plenty of the game left, got a yellow card. So why did he pull him back? Because he's old, he's slow, and he couldn't cope with Saka. So everything should have been pushed at Chiellini. All our attacks, all our speed, all our force, everything should have gone at Chiellini. He'd have made another stupid error, got another book. He may have been down to 10 men. They'd have lost their talisman. Their heads would have gone down and we'd have won the Euro. I mean, Neil, that is a lot of, that is a lot of what ifs. I mean, an awful yeah, lot well, of what ifs. Of course it's, uh, yeah, but the whole, your whole programme is about what ifs. So, you know, you can't throw what I'm saying, what ifs, when all you do is say what if, what if, what if. The whole, all about football, everything that, that everyone talks about is what if. Well, it's so, not really. If I say, that, is Harry Kane well, the greatest striker in the world? There's, that's not a what if. Yeah. Well, no. What if he's not? If, what if he's not fit? And then it's a what if. Well, no, it? no, no. Whenever you ask, is someone the best player in the world? It's always when they're fit. Yeah. It's not when they've got a broken leg, yeah, is it? But, yeah, but he's not the best player in the world. I know, but Kane, I'm just no. I'm just so, making the point that sometimes we ask a question, we don't ask what ifs. No, we, but your whole program is built on no, this not. happened, that happened. No, it's not okay. In your opinion? <laughs> it's not, is it? If I say, if I say, okay, uh, okay. If I say, are Man City going to win the league? Hold on, Neil. If I say, are Man City going to win the league? 0371, where's the what if question? Well, what if they don't? What if Arsenal score more points? Yeah, but that's, not, that's, that's not the question that's he's asking. That's not the question I'm asking, is it? Are you, are you talking about whether, whether things are a what if or whether they're not? Or whether I don't know what's happening now. Is, is, I don't. What, what? What if I go to Phil? Thanks, Neil. <laughs> Hello, Phil. I'll save some sanity. Hello, Phil. <laughs> Are you all right? Not so bad, not so bad. Uh, giggling to yourself. Like oh. a pair of eyes, pair of, like... Uh... Oh, I can't hear oh, What is going on? What if we go back to... <laughs> no, what if we had a good phone line? We'll go back to you in a minute, Phil. Uh, George is up next. Hello, George. Hi, guys. Great show as ever. Thanks, George. Are you all right? You well? Sorry, what was that? Are you, <laughs> Are you well today? I'm very well, sir. Okay. Very well. Can you make your point without using the sentence "what if"? <laughs> of course, I can. Okay. Um, 
England, wow. You know, whenever they, it's the same old story. Whenever they come up against a well-organized, well-drilled, well-coached, well-managed team, they, they, they just they come short, don't they? Mm. And that's what Brazil were. Yeah. You know, we've seen it so many times. Now, like what Benty said, do we have to start looking? Why is that happening? Like what Benty said, why doesn't Foden play like he does for Man City? Do you think with that talent on the field, with Pep in charge, we'd be winning a lot more than European Championships? Yeah, we would. I think, you know, like... And all this, all this pinning this on Harry Kane. Yes, he's a good player. Yes, he bangs him in. But you know, when we really need him, he has got a tendency to go missing. Mm. You know, I would have put my house, my wife, and my kids on him scoring that penalty. You know what? What happened to the pressure? You'd have lost all of them. You know, it's just, it's just, it's the same old England, isn't it? Yeah. You know, I'm 48 yeah. now, and I can look back and up. You know, when I was younger, and I think three lines on my chest singing and dancing. It's coming home. It's coming home. Now I know, you know, it's, it's not coming home. They yeah. haven't got it until they get the right man in charge. Okay. Do, do you know, we, we, we did it, I was on the show earlier, and we did a segment, and I can't remember the exact stat, but it was almost like England's win percentage against teams that are ranked in and around them, 6%. How many? 6%. 6 or 60? 6. Against teams in and around them in terms of the FIFA World Rankings. Or like top 10? Yeah, that like 6%. What, England under Southgate or England overall? I've, I'm sure it's under Southgate's watch. Wow. Talk Sport Drive. Super opinionated sporting debate. Monday to Friday afternoon from 4 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.